Good morning. You're back again, and I'm back again. Let's read. We're in the book of Lamentations. The prophet Jeremiah is going to talk to us, or we're going to hear what he has to say anyway, in Lamentations chapter 2, verses 14 to 16. And here we go. Your prophets have seen for you false and deceptive visions. They have not uncovered your iniquity to bring back your captives, but have envisioned for you false prophecies and delusions. All who pass by clap their hands at you. They hiss and shake their heads at the daughter of Jerusalem. Is this the city that is called the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? All your enemies have opened their mouth against you. They hiss and gnash their teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Surely this is the day we have waited for. We have found it. We have seen it. So the enemies are pretty happy here, aren't they? We've been wanting to see Jerusalem smashed, and now there it is. Yes, you know, that's what the, that's the thinking of these people who are looking on. That city has been humbled. That's what they needed. Why did God wait so long? And why does God wait so long? Well, God is merciful. He's working to recover us. He's trying to bring us along back. He's very long-suffering and patient, isn't he? So, yes, he woos and woos and woos, and, and many times his people are pretty indifferent. Well, anyway, what we have here, number one on our section here, False prophets. What did they do? They gave visions that matched what the people wanted to hear. You know, the itching ears business. The people in Judah, their ears were itching all over the place. And so there were, there were false prophets by the dozen teaching nonsense. And there were people to soak it up and go right along with it. And today with the internet, forgive me, but yeah, there's all kinds of weirdness out there. You can click from one thing to another, a thing of truth to a thing of absolute weirdness. And you could do it... In Till you till you passed out. It's bottomless. We want to go to the Bible and find out what God really has to say. There's a lot of false teaching and false prophecy out there. We need to avoid it. Those people should have avoided it. They didn't avoid it. Look where it got them. The false prophets, they have not uncovered their iniquity. So again, they were teaching things that suited the people. They could keep their sins and then hear the, the prof, interesting prophetic piece and sort of go for that, but they were able to keep their sins. A true prophet isn't going to, isn't going to coddle you. And so what do we see here, really, if we just take the whole piece together? We see the complete failure of human schemes and people that supposedly are speaking on God's behalf, prophets that turned out to be false. All the things they propose, oh yes, in just a couple of years, this Babylon will be, this will all be over, we'll be back, back in a joyful place. That's not what's going on here. There are 70 years of captivity ahead because of their apostasy. So no, this isn't going to be a quick ride on the golf cart. This is going to be generational. God is clearing the deck. Oh, how careful we need to be that false teachers and false prophets, that we are not misled by them because we want to hold on to something over here, some iniquities that the church is allowing or that the prophets are, are not addressing. Hands off. Keep your hand where God wants it to be, and you'll be blessed. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, there is the, here the complete and total failure of human schemes. Even of those human schemes clothed in clergy robes, clothed as though somebody was speaking for God as his prophet or maybe as his, his preacher. Help us, Lord, to look to the Bible and prove all things. Help us to test whatever we're told or what we hear. Test it all by your book and we will prosper. But any other which thing is going to lead us into a disastrous place. And that's where these people have gone to, a disastrous place. And yet, Lord, you have not forgotten them. You're going to bring them back if they're just willing. Be our helper, Lord, too, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So may God bring us all back, draw us all closer, and show us how he can use us individually, each and every one of us. We're all part of the priesthood, right? The priesthood of all believers. So let's get off of our chairs, figure out what God would have us to do. Be blessed.